Hey, everybody. All right. What's up, Rich? Doing good. Can you start when we were asking about Greg last week and, and you know his history better than anyone, but to be able to come back as quickly as he did from the game that he had, what it says about him and, and what that does for a player going, a kicker going forward. Yeah, I mean, he's been through it before where he's, you know, had a, a, bad, a bad game and he's always responded. And it's kind of having like a cornerback mentality is, you know, you get beat on a play and you got to have a, a real fast memory, I guess you could say, and move on to the next play. But um, I've been with Greg now for 10 seasons. So I've been through a, a lot of highs and a couple lows. And he's always responded out of a bad game or a missed kick. And so isn't it poetic justice and how that football thing turns where the very next game he gets a shot at a big game winner and nails it. And we're on the sideline and we couldn't have been more confident, you know, I was on the headset and I just said, this game's over. This game's over. Yep. Um, the thought process was, I think Cowboys fans aren't the play it safe type. So I was going to give them what they wanted, come after their ass on punt rush. So I hope they're happy with it because we, we, came, we came after them. Um, it's kind of the mindset going into the game that we're going to we're going to come after this, come after this football, um, and you can sure debate everything. <laughs> um, but I'm still not so sure that we actually roughed them. Did they call it on Kamara, or feel like there was some blocking there too? Yeah, I didn't get who they actually a jersey number because it was a train wreck right there at the block spot. But what I got on film is that their number 40 hooked Kamara and pulled them back into the punter, and. You know, I, you can make a great case it was holding, or that the punter hit his own blocker. But there's a lot of bodies at that pile, and so um, our goal is to come after him. I mean, there's, there's a risk there. You know, if you, you know, obviously, at that situation, though, you have a chance to get the ball back. Yeah. So that the risk reward there. I mean, certainly you can debate whether it was block, a penalty or not, but that's the risk you're taking that you could get that punt. They rush the punt like that. Yeah. I mean, anytime you rush the punt, there's there's a risk, you know. But uh, last week, Pittsburgh was up by three points in the fourth quarter, and they rushed a punt. They blocked it, ran in for a touchdown. So the reward is the reward is high. The the risk is high. Um, but this is how you had the lead. You had a chance to get the ball back. The offense had a chance to score too. So yeah, there, there was it wasn't the same as the Pittsburgh situation. Right? Yeah, I mean, I think you know, going into the game, you got a game plan and. Um, you never anticipate that ah, I don't want to pull the trigger because I'm worried about you know roughing the punter. I think anytime you rush, you know you're, you're coming after the football. And like I said, I, I I could go to the tape and we could sit down and watch and you know tell me if it's roughing. You know that's I'm biased, <laughs> but but I think the TV copy shows a pretty good picture of maybe something else. Is that something you send into the league to have them look at? Is yeah. This, yeah. Yeah. And I'll be interested to see what they say. But like I said, there's a lot of bodies there. And um, our goal is to come after it. And you could absolutely second guess it. And I'm OK with that. But part of our game plan was to, was to come after them you know, with a real aggressive mindset, give the Cowboys fans something what they're looking for. A decision like that, how does it go down on the sideline with you and, and Mike? To, to rush that punt? Yeah. That was my decision. So you just go up and tell them? No, I just made the play call on third to fourth down, that's what we were going to do. I think right before that we got a sack, knocked him back a little bit out of range. Um, we had a different call once we got the sack, and then moved him back a little bit further. We changed the call. And so we thought we'd come after it. After the fact, how many times have you had the head coach come tell you what the hell was that? On the rough and the punter? On any of them. that one or? Oh, a lot. <laughs> 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 I also had a head coach jump on my neck and punch me in the gut and say, hell of a job when we blocked it. So. I think the only way to block a punt is to is to rush the punt, and uh, there's been a few times you rough him. Do you sense that Mike is comfortable with the gambling part of that? If you want to call it that, that's a good question. I think um, I would say I would say yes with an asterisk. Was he happy yesterday? <laughs> on the game during no, on the, on that, that halftime, was he happy about that whole decision? How it played out yesterday? Um, I, I think he was. Um, I think he was okay with us following the game plan and coming after him. He's probably upset that we roughed him, or that they called roughing. 
you, you expressed confidence in Greg last week, confidence this week, but in that end of game situation where the clock's running down, what's your ideal range of where you get Greg? Or is it kind of like you're 85% confident at past the 50 to 95%? Yeah. How would you? That's a good one. We were, as we started that drive and the, the ball started to go, I think we, um, wherever we got to, we were probably at the 30 or 40 yard line range. And Coach Nuss came up to me, and we always kind of have a predetermined line. But just on how Greg was hitting it, I, you know, Nuss asked me, I said, just cross the 50. You know, which if it was at the 50, it'd be a 68 yarder. And I think we probably could have kicked that if we needed to. But the goal was to get to the 45 at least. But I think if we crossed the 50, we would have been in range for a walk off kick. You probably don't kick that if there's, you know, 18 seconds left. But if there's four seconds left, I, I think his range was unlimited. And the reason why we chose to kick off the second half going the other direction is there's actually a little bit of a breeze going the way we kicked that last game win the field goal. So um, we actually chose you know, to have the little bit of wind in the fourth at our back going that way, and um, that paid off. Does this pregame warm-up dictate where you want to be? Because he missed two from 54 going in that direction before the game. In pregame? Yeah, yeah pregame has, doesn't dictate our distance at all. Where, did, where does that part of the sky report on the wind pattern? How is that? Form, what informs that? Like, how do you guys pick up on that sort of thing? For ourselves, you're saying? Yeah, you know that the wind in that direction is what you want to play with. I think, I think it's just a kicker's comfort level. So at the end of the first half, we, we seriously debated giving him a crack at a 69-yarder going towards our tunnel, if you remember that. That was when we put the offense back on the field and almost for the touchdown. Um, but the wind was a little bit, a little bit in our face where you know, if we got five more yards, we're trying to draw them off sides. If we got five more yards, we would have kicked that. But at 69, we felt, mm, they might have put a returner back there. We don't want to have our offensive line covering it. That's why when we came out on the field in the second half, we said, let's flip it. So in the fourth quarter, if we, have, if we need a big kick, we're kicking where we want, which is the way we picked it. McQuaid went and got the ball out of the net or had the guy hand it to him afterwards. Did you see him do that? Is that something that he normally does? or? Does their, his relationship with Greg say, okay, I know this is a special moment for the guy, let me go get it? I think the latter. I think he knew that it was a special moment. So right when we kick it, he protected, he made sure it was good, and he took off and he got the game ball. So the ball that Coach McCarthy presented to Greg in the locker room was the ball that he actually kicked. And then Greg put that ball in his bag. So that'll be one for the memory bank for him. Greg's a pro, he's had bad games before and all that, but just what, what, do, you, what do you think that exact moment I mean, we kind of talked a little bit earlier, but did this feel different at all for, for him? Um, I, I think, I don't think so. I think, you know, if, if he had a great week last week, it probably would have felt the same. There might have been a little bit of, a little bit of monkey off the back, but, you know, I, I got to be careful talking about Greg's bad games because he really hasn't had many of them. I could probably pick four in now 10 years that it's like, eh, that probably wasn't his best game. So we're talking about a small sample size of bad games. Um, but for him to make any walk-off kick, but yeah, especially coming off maybe the previous week, a um, little bit of pressure on him, it's pretty awesome. So he'll have that one along with a couple other walk-off kicks, hopefully for his kids someday. You pretty us, awesome. You told us that story of Janikowski last week. When you're coming off a week like last week, do you, and there aren't very many bad games as you just said, how do you balance? Do I need to talk to Greg a little bit or just kind of leave him alone, or how do you sort of figure out the best way to go there? Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a really good question. Um, I think I probably have treated every week maybe a little differently. This past week, I really didn't have to talk. I didn't say, hey, Greg, you know, keep your head up, man. You're going to be OK. You're a good kicker. You're ex you know, I, I didn't go that route with Greg. We just we had a plan to get some extra kicking in on Wednesday. Um, we got a few extra kicks on Thursday. so. I wish I had a better story for you, but it was kind of business as usual. I didn't want to amplify it like, uh, you know, it's such a bad week and everybody's crashing down on you and um, we don't read or listen to certain things. So he wasn't attuned probably to all that. Um, but we kind of treated it a little bit as business as usual. I, you know, I told him the story of Janikowski and, you know, really good kickers sometimes miss kicks. But the best kickers always bounce back from missed kicks. And that's why Greg's in the league now 10 years probably with a whole bunch of years left, is that he has the ability to, to bounce back from a missed kick and make a really big kick. Um, what an awesome ending. I mean, how fitting can it be to you know, kind of be the GOAT the previous week and then make a big kick for his team yesterday? Is there value in having a 
kick around the practice squad long term, or is that something that, as Greg shows, that he's recaptured the rhythm and you know it's just smooth sailing from here on out? Like you just say, okay, we don't need this anymore. Yeah, I think I think there's value in it for the fact that we used Lerm last week to have our kickoff return team field some live kickoffs, or sometimes we don't have Greg hit kickoffs for the scout kickoff team just to, you know, he doesn't need to hit that many balls. So there's there's value in Liram, you know, hitting scout kickoff kickoffs, um, even some punts for the scout punt team. So if, if, unless we need legs on practice squad, then yeah, you know, kicker can come and go. But if we if we got a spot, because now there's 16 of them, yeah, there's always value in keeping an extra leg. Mike, Mike uh, we've seen him at the end, we've seen him at Linebacker, he played at center for a snap. Uh, it looked like a training camp. He had him return a little bit. He was catching some. I think he hunted in high school. Has yeah. he been in your ear at all about doing more <laughs> yeah. on special teams? He thinks he can do everything. I mean, he wants. He literally wants to return kickoffs. Uh, he wants to be the backup punter. Um, probably wants to play quarterback. But yeah, he um, just a just a really fun kid, and uh, I wouldn't put anything past him. If we got him back to return a kickoff, he'd probably do a pretty damn good job. John, when the injuries start hitting last week with guys like Michael Gallup, Demarcus, Randy out, and some of your guys like Tony Pollard and Doran Armstrong are going to get more opportunities on yeah. offense and defense, what was your process like reestablishing which personnel you'll be using and to what degree you told you're not using these guys anymore, you're only using them 10% as much? Yeah, that's a really good one. So our first game against Tampa, we had a, a really different lineup last week just because of all the personnel changes. Um, we added, we changed spots for Jeremy Sprinkle on punt team. Leighton Van Der Esch inserted on on punt team. Um, Azur Kamara ended up playing all phases. Luke Gifford, we got active. So there was a ton of shuffling from week one to week two, and I think that'll probably continue to happen until we kind of find how it all fits. And that's probably pretty normal. The first couple weeks of the season is the shuffling of the roster and especially with the injuries and that that adds a lot to it so I think part of my job is to to be a good roster shuffler <laughs> and find homes for everybody um, as the football turns and one of the biggest attributes of a special teams player is versatility because you might be right guard this week left guard this week right tackle left end I mean it's all over the place so we try to keep it pretty simple and find a home for everybody because it changes a lot. Thank you. Thanks, John. Thank you. All right. Thanks, you guys.